We all believe that only expensive phones can take great photos. Well, that's not true. All of these are pictures that are unedited and taken from the Vivo S1 that starts at just about 18,000 rupees. All right, so let's talk about the camera. On paper, it's got a triple AI camera system at the back and a very impressive 32 megapixel front facing camera. The rear camera system has three lenses, a primary 16 megapixel lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Now it can shoot up to full HD videos, but at 30 frames per second, not at 60 FPS. So it's not a great phone for shooting videos, but this video is focused more on the picture taking capabilities of the Vivo S1. All right, so let's talk about the primary lens. Now here are some samples. The picture quality is pretty impressive for a mid-range smartphone. It's crisp, detailed, and I don't think you can get any better than this in this price segment. All these pictures are available for download, so you can see it for yourself and decide. And the Vivo S1 does use AI to punch up the colors, exposure, and other factors to make your photos pop more and look more professional. And I honestly don't think that phones that are four times more expensive than this are worth the price difference that you end up paying from a camera perspective. Now there is an ultra wide lens that allows you to take breathtaking photos and they're really immersive. Switching to that lens is as simple as tapping this button right here when in photo mode. Ultra wide photos, they're just amazing. Obviously you can't use them in every situation, but it's a must use lens for landscape photography or when you're trying to fit more in a frame just because you're not that far away. Now here's a picture taken using the regular camera and when I switch to the ultra wide, just look at the impact. So if you see a wide open area, capturing with the ultra wide lens is your best bet. In this case, I was too close and I couldn't go back any further. So I switched to the ultra wide and was able to capture more in the same frame. And you can see the various use case scenarios now. One issue that people often face is the difference in white balance between regular photos and ultra wide photos. And that's the case with the S1 only sometimes. For example, in this case, the white balance between the regular photo and the ultra wide photo is pretty much the same. And that's how you'd want it to be. But then if you look at this set, the regular photo seems to be cooler in comparison to the ultra wide shot from the same position that has a slightly yellow warm tone. And lastly, the 2 megapixel depth sensor, which does an amazing job of taking pictures with beautiful soft background blurs, making your subject pop out. These pictures are extremely high quality and even if you zoom in, you'll notice that pictures do not lose quality that drastically. To activate the depth sensor, you need to get into aperture mode before you take a photo. Focus on your subject and then tap the shutter key. Once done, you can also get into your gallery, change the blur levels of the background and even shift the focus. So, you know, you get complete flexibility. Now, of course, all the photos that you've seen so far are shot in great lighting conditions. But when the lights go dim, so, you know, it could be the natural lighting or indoor lighting that's a little low. That's where the Vivo S1's camera starts to struggle a little bit with overall quality and the colors. Pictures lose their vivid nature, the color bump is gone and they start to look a little washed out. Photos are not as crisp as they were with good lighting. And you will start to feel the difference between the Vivo S1 um, and you know the flagship smartphones that are more expensive. And that's where the difference really counts. However, surprisingly, the camera does brilliantly against the sun. Now here are some pictures I took when the camera is facing bright light, the sun for example. The pictures actually came out quite dramatic and the HDR has definitely worked well. Obviously there is a bit of AI processing that's happening in the background for all the photos and I think that really helps. Coming to pictures taken indoors, obviously it is still a function of light. But these images are less impressive in comparison to outdoor photos that the Vivo S1 took. So as long as you have good lighting indoors, you will get good photos to work with. The front camera, like all the Vivo front cameras, is just phenomenal. I truly think that Vivo selfie cameras are one of the best and much better than all the other flagships that I've ever experienced, no kidding. If you look at these pictures, they're all very casually and naturally shot in decent lighting, and they're super clear, high resolution, and just really crisp. So overall, I think that the Vivo S1 has an amazing camera quality and picture quality, for a phone that's about 17,990. The Vivo Z1 Pro is another phone that you could consider because I think they have the same camera systems and the Z1 Pro actually starts at a lower price point. The Vivo S1 just looks a lot better, you know, it stands for style and that's what the S is for. 
So you can make that uh, justification for yourself. And quite honestly, guys, the Vivo S1's camera will meet your photography needs for 80 to 90% of the use cases, because I'm hoping you would take pictures or you do take pictures in good lighting conditions. Rarely you will shoot in low light. Uh, and that's when you need phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro or, you know, the S10, the S10e and so on. But the price differential is huge for just those 15 to 20 percent of use cases where the light may be a little dim and your photos might not be then great with the Vivo S1. So take that call. But generally speaking, I think it's an ex excellent value for money uh, at just 17,990 and the camera that you get, it's pretty solid.